Sister, you're welcome. God bless you. Thank you, Grace. My name is my name is Oben Marion. I'm from the Southwest region, precisely from mine. She's coming from the Southwest region. Her name is Marion, and she's residing here in Douala. You are here today to testify and thank God for what He has done in your life and that of your family. Am I correct? Right on with your glorious testimony. It all started on the 13th of October 2019. Actually, I'm a labor, I was a laboratory student reading accounting and finance. So we normally have classes from 6 a.m. To, to 10 p.m. in the night. On that fateful day, when we were actually done from lectures, some unknown guys attacked us in the, in the campus. They took our bags and then they brutalized us. Like, I don't know whether they used the knife on my hands. I don't know. So I just discovered that I found myself in the hospital. I like the insane. My hands, that the... She cannot talk. The images will speak for themselves. Please, can we have the images while she was in the hospital? After her lectures from school, she was returning home and some unknown men attacked her and her colleagues and uh, did this macabre act on them. And all she could remember was when she was lying in the hospital one month later on. Why in the hospital, how was life for you? In the hospital, life was very miserable for me because I couldn't use my hands. <laughs> I couldn't do anything for myself. It was my mom that would bathe me, brush my teeth for me, do everything for me. And as a student, I really wanted to achieve my, my goal by obtaining my first degree. So I, I, I was in the hospital for one month, and later on, we left the hospital and went back home. To no avail. The doctor told me that the ions, that the ions would be on my hands for a year before they remove it. I was like, doctor, how am I going to cope with this situation? All oh, my friends are in school. I have to go back to school. <laughs> so he told me that he doesn't know, but I should keep coming to the hospital. So. <laughs> Sister, back uh, from the hospital, could you bet yourself? I couldn't do anything for myself. Could, could you brush? Nothing. I couldn't brush. Nothing. Who was helping you? My mom. It was my mom that does everything for me. She will bend me. Since she's a businesswoman, she leaves in the morning, then comes, comes back in the evening. <laughs> So I felt so bad for her because I know she struggles so that. <laughs> Viewers at home, we are watching the Sunday's live prophetic service and we are listening to this glorious testimony. It's so pathetic. The situation in which our sister found herself about a year ago when she was returning from school and some unknown men walked up to her and her colleagues and just cut them into pieces. And as you can see from the images on our screens, she was rushed to the hospital where she has lost a lot of blood and uh, she was helpless even to brush her mouth. She could not do it. All was being done by her mother. She could not bathe herself. She could not feed herself. It was only by the mercy of God that her mother, who happens to be a businesswoman, bathe her in the morning, brush her, give her food, and go to her business place and only come back in the evening. Just imagine how life could be to her. All her plans as a third year student studying business management and finance were being dashed to the mud. As the doctors told her she could not continue school. How did you see yourself in the temple of the Lord's Church? It was my uncle that invited me to the church. He said he wanted me to come and fellowship here with him, so I followed him. The first day I came, we were seated outside. Since there was an iron in my, this my left hand, so I was scared to come in so that people would not actually hit the head. So 
But then a prophet, a prophet, um, Apostle Gerard was praying for people. He came outside and met me and he prayed for me. When I went back home, when I went back home that day, the next day I, I, could, I could use my brush to brush my mouth. When I woke up in the morning. Can we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? Put God's hands beautifully for Jesus Christ. When the apostle prayed for you, before he prayed for you, you had been with that hand for how long that you could not use the hand? For five months. You had been with that hand for five months that you could not use it. Yes. But the first day you came to church, the apostle prayed with you. You went back home, you could use that hand. Yes. Can we clap for Jesus Christ? Continue with so your testimony. So I could use the hand in the morning to brush my teeth. When my mom woke up, she said, Mama, what are you doing? I said, I want to brush my teeth. And she said, will you be able? I said, yes. He said, I'm scared of the hand. I said, mommy, don't be scared. I know I'm healed. She said, okay, I'm happy seeing you brushing your mouth. And it continued like that. There was a day they had a service here to enter in the, in the pool. I still came here with um, my uncle that brought me here. When I got into the pool, then uh, I see met Apostle Gerard. He was the one that prayed for me. When I left... When I left, I went back home. It was in, in February 2020. When I got back home, I told my mom, Mommy, I want to go back to school. She told me that I cannot go back to school now because she does not have money for the school fees. And besides, look at my both hands. I can't do anything. I can't write. How will I be able to go to school? I told her that, Mommy, I'll go to school. But to be sincere, I wasn't able to even hold a pen. I couldn't do anything bad, but I had that faith in me that I am healed. She said, this child, you trouble me a lot. I said, mommy, I'm a blessing to you. I'm not a trouble. Then the next day, that was on, on Monday, I left home. I went to school. I told her that I'm going to school to meet my head of department that I want to resume classes. My mom told me that I'm joking. I just begged her transport she gave me when I went to school. When my head of department saw me, the man really felt bad. It was like, because the school is actually a French institution. So I don't want to call the name of the school. So when he saw me, Nahina asked, Nga, what did you come here to do? I said, I came to resume classes. He said, are you sure that you are able to write? I said, yes, I can write, though I wasn't able to write. I was just speaking with faith. I told him that, yes, I'll, I'll write, that I can write. He said, are you ready for your CAs? I said, yes, I'm ready for my CAs because I, I had one of my friends that always come to the house. I'll beg her the note for her to give me. Let me study at home. Please, you know, we have some grandparents here. They don't know the meaning of CA. Can you break that grammar for us? C uh, okay, sorry. CA means continual assessment. Right okay, on your means testimony. a test. So he now asked me if I was ready for the, for the test. I told him that, yes, I am ready. He said, this child, you are impossible. I said, I'm possible. So he, he told me that he's going to discuss with, because they had already written all the CEs, all everything we're preparing for our first semester's exam. So he had to contact some of the lecturers, the, all of the lecturers, and they gave me the CAs, and I wrote, I validated everything without going for receipts. Can you put your hands together for Jesus Christ? How my hand managed to work, it's God. Because when I came back, you know, sorry, when I went to the, to the school, he told me that I should go and think very well if I'll be able to go in for the exams. On, I said, no, say, I'm not thinking. He said, hmm, you this anglophone girl. I said, say, I'm not thinking. I'll come back home and uh, I'll prepare for the exams I'm going to. And when I came back, I took one of my, 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 my notebooks. I started writing. I told my mom, look, I'm, I can write. She said, you can write. I said, yes, I can write. She looked at me and said, wow, God has really done miracle. Now she said, mama, you will not go to school. There's no money. I said, I don't, I don't care where the money will come from. My exams is next month. So I don't just care where the money will come from. Let's pray God will provide because the school fees is 510000 She said, we have spent everything in the hospital and I understood her, but she was saying her own. I told her, let's pray. Let's pray. I believe that God is going to bless us. 
So when I went in for the CAs, I validated everything. And before the first semester exams, she told me, Mama, I have money to pay your school. That God has blessed us. So I paid my, my first semester school fees. I went in for the exams. And I validated all my courses with no receipts. You can do that louder. You can put your hands together for Jesus. No, she was not believing. When I thought I was going to school, she was like, ah, just go and try. I said, I'm not trying. So when I brought now my, my results sleep, the first semester results sleep, and she started crying. She was giving thanks to God. I was so happy because seeing my mother happy makes me, makes me happy. So the second semester now, second semester started, I... I actually went in for the second semester. The problem of the school fees was not a problem any longer. I went in for the second semester, took my CAs, took my exams, and then I validated everything. Can we clap for Jesus Christ? Without any waste of time, can we see your results? So tell us which one is that? This one is this one is my is my first semester my first semester result. With how many average? With twelve average. <laughs> and this is my second semester result with thirteen point fifty three average. So tell us, before now, when you were in school, while you were not, when you were not having this accident, how was your performance in school? And after the accident, how was your performance in school? Since I got to that institution, since it's a French institution, and I've always studied in English, it was very difficult for me. It was, I, wasn't really, I wasn't able to have up to this average. I used to have but 11 average, because since all our courses are in French, so I worked so hard to have 12 average. There was no way. I used to have 11.53, 11.81. But when I had this accident, behold, I had an average in that school that I've never had before. Can we clap for Jesus Christ? And after you validated all your courses, what was the next thing? When I validated, when I, when, uh, when our results came out, I had this um, average. Then, when if I had defend, because when if I had defend, though since I didn't do internship, but I did internship when I was in level two. So I now worked on a, a project, and God blessed me. I succeeded in the defend. The day of my defend, most of my classmates they were like. To a fair command, they asked me, how did I do to come to school? Because due to the COVID-19, all of us were no longer in the same class. So many of them never knew that I, I was in school, since I'm an only Anglophone student in our counseling department. So when they now saw me, they were like, Anglophone, to a fair command, I said, it's God. Can we have some images of our defense? Can we clap for Jesus Christ? Now, you said you could use that hand to write the hand that the doctor said it was practically impossible for you to use that hand. Can you do some exercises with that hand for the glory of the Lord? Please, can we watch back the images of our sister when she had that accident?
And before we take leave of you, can you just explain to us the medical reports, the scan? I, I had a broken bone, as you can see. That I'm not a medical doctor, but I know what happened to me. So this was a broken bone. There was an iron here on this, my left hand, that there was an, that they put to support the bone. And then here, yeah, there's an iron to here. Yeah. Then here, yeah, this was my, my right hand. That shows that I couldn't do anything with this hand. But now I can, I can lift up the hands. And when I went to the hospital, because since I was, I was going to school, I, I did not frequent the hospital. And then the doctor asked me why I've not been coming to the hospital. I said, well, doctor, I'm sorry. I was busy with my project. He looked at me and said, did you go to school? I said, yes, doctor, I did. He said, how did you write? I said, God helped me. And I wrote my exams. When I showed him my result, he was very happy. He said, I'm so happy for you. You're a courageous girl. I said, thank you, doctor. Can we clap for Jesus Christ? Looking back one year and where the Lord has taken you today, what would be your word of advice to viewers watching you all over the world on Temple TV? First of all, I'm so grateful to God for what he has done in my life. Without him, I would have not been where I am today. Because on arriving in the hospital, I noticed I was already losing it. I couldn't breathe because of the too much blood that I, I lost. So I want to advise anyone, the people that are watching me, that God is faithful. If you put your trust in him, he will never fail you. Our sister holding the microphone is a medical personnel. Now, you holding the microphone, you are a medical personnel. Looking at that x-ray, what can you say with regards to the accident our sister had? You are a medical personnel. Well, people of God, from this x-ray, looking at her, the, the left hand, there is a break in her bone. At the left hand, there is a break in her bone, which shows that there is no... Um, the, the bones, the, the, the joints, the joints have, are not together. And on the, right, on the right hand, you see that there's also, there's also an injury there. And they are not also together. The, lig the ligaments that are in the bones in the right hand, they are not also together. Which causes the difficulties in her, in her ligaments to, to be active and flexible. That's what I can explain for me. And now when you see her today and looking at that medical report, what can you see? Well, I can see there is an improvement. There is an improvement because from her explanation on how she's feeling, you can see that she's active. The right hand is active. So this is tell us that the ligaments on her right hand, they have been, it has been healed. It has been remodeled, so it has been healed, and now she's, she's active. So as a medical personnel, what can you say with regards to the power of God? I can say God is really mysterious, because what he does, even the doctors, they cannot do, and he is the greatest physician. Can we put our hands together one more time for Jesus? Put your hands beautifully for Master Jesus Christ. So as a word of encouragement, she says, we should put our trust in the Lord for God will never fail us in time of crisis. We rejoice with you for this wonderful blessings that the Lord Almighty have accorded you. I will encourage you to go. May God's word, a bread of life in your life and that of your family so that these blessings remain permanent in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can you put your hands together for Jesus Christ?